Hey y'all, Kay here with Crafting Cousins. We're so excited you decided to stop by here today. If you're new here, welcome. We hope you find lots of inspiration in these three fall DIY home decor items. Hey y'all, this is Kay. Let's gather a few materials from the Dollar Tree and make a quick craft. That means we're gonna take some things and leave them kinda like they are, but we're just gonna zhuzh them up and make them just a little bit better so that we can make this set of stacked pumpkins. I picked up these three pumpkins just last week at my local Dollar Tree. They say blessed, thankful, and grateful. And of course, the three colors they come in is an off-white, an aqua, and a pumpkin color. I will be making a bow, so I'm going to use some wired ribbon. I'm just using the remnants from several rolls in my stash from my latest projects. I'm going to be using two one-gallon paint stirrer sticks, and then also this small piece left over from a five-gallon paint stirrer stick. I'll be using some folk art chalk paint in the color Glacier, and finally some jute twine and my hot glue gun. The first thing I'm going to do is take this rivet, cut it in half, and the pieces are about nine inches long. I'm going to come in with that glacier blue chalk paint and I'm going to paint the ribbons. I didn't have the correct color that matched the blue pumpkin, but this glacier blue painted onto these ribbons is very close to the exact color. Then I'll just hang those up and let those dry for several hours. I took the five gallon paint stirrer stick out to the garage and I cut it first of all with my miter saw and that got the angle started and then I grabbed my utility knife and my sandpaper and I just start hacking it out kind of following the same pattern that was on the pumpkin already but this will beef it up and it'll look like a much nicer pumpkin stem. And first of all, I'm just going to check the fit and make sure that's going to work. Then I get out my furniture repair markers from the Dollar Tree and I'm going to stain the front and the edges. Just deepen that color and make it look more realistic. I'm going to remove all of this twine at the top of each of the pumpkins. Then I will also remove the little bow at the bottom of the stem. Then I'm coming in, first of all, with the, my orange pumpkin and we'll place on our new stem. I'm also going to distress it a little bit with some sandpaper. Then I'm going to line up thankful on top of grateful, making sure that I cover those holes. We'll give it some hot glue on the stem and on that area and then carefully line it up. Then to make sure it's really supported well when it stands up as a stacked pumpkin, I'm going to come in with my one gallon paint stirrer sticks and apply it to the back. And we'll just hold that down till it sets. And then we need to add on the third pumpkin. Again, I'm going to cover up those holes on that pumpkin. These pumpkins are just too cute the way they are. I'm just making them a little bit better. So I put on the third pumpkin, and then of course I'm going to add one more one gallon paint stirrer stick to the back so, so that it will stand nicely. And here's what it looks like so far. Okay, full confession. Somehow I didn't tape making the bow for this project, but I'm going to recreate it here using these three ribbons, and I used four on the actual bow, but you just do the same thing over and over. I cut these pieces at nine inches, eight inches, and about seven and a half inches. I'm going to do sort of a messy bow. I'm going to first of all, fold all of my pieces in half and dovetail the ends. I also cut off a piece of twine about 15 inches long or so so that we can make our bow and cinch it in the middle. The first thing I'm going to do is take my pieces and pleat them in the middle and kind of fold them up like a bow tie. I'm not crossing them on an X because they're too thick, too wide, and it just doesn't work as well. So once I get it together, the two pieces, I tie some twine around it, pull it nice and tight, then I start with the second piece. And again, making two bow ties and cinching them next to each other. I place them down on top of the first set, wrap some twine around and make a pretty knot, get everything nice and lined up there. And then for the third piece, same thing, pleat it, push it next to each other, 
place it on top of what we already have, wrap that jute this time several times around, tie some nice knots, and then we come in and cut the ends, making sure that everything can be seen, and that's what the bow looks like, nice and full. And this is the bow I actually made for it. I put a little glue there under the stem. I'm also going to tie the excess twine around the back and also put more glue, and there's our finished piece. Easy peasy, but a lot of punch for not much money. Thank you for stopping by our channel today. If you are new here, we hope that you will subscribe by clicking on the little button below. Make sure you ring the bell so you will be notified every time we upload new content. We upload new videos each week offering a variety of DIYs, trash to treasure projects, and tips, tricks, and hacks. We just know you'll find something you like with Crafting Cousins. Hey y'all, it's Trish. For this project, I'm going to use this little bucket that I got from Michael's clearance section, some floral foam that I got from Dollar Tree. I have a round and a cone, a greenery garland I had left over from Christmas last year, some air dry clay and a silicone mold that I got from Amazon, some Waverly chalk paint in ink and white, a berry garland from the Dollar Tree, some mini pumpkins that I picked up from the Dollar Tree, some fall florals from Dollar Tree and Walmart, a bamboo skewer, and my glue gun and some glue sticks. I loved this little bucket when I found it at Michael's and I knew it would be perfect for this project because it was the perfect size. I do want to dress it up a little bit though, so I'm gonna take my sanding block and just scuff it up some so that it will hold the paint better. Now I want to add a clay piece to the front of this just to dress it up and give it some character. I'm going to use my cornstarch put down in my silicone mold. Then I take a piece of my air dry clay and I work it in my fingers until it's pliable. We're gonna stick it down into our mold, pressing it evenly and taking off the excess. And then all you have to do is flip your mold over and it will peel off from your clay piece and it looks beautiful. Now it does have to dry so I had already made one and let it dry and that's the one that we're going to use. To attach my piece to my bucket I'm going to use my fix all adhesive and some hot glue and then I'll just hold it in place until that hot glue sets. Once that is set, I'm going to paint my bucket. I took my Waverly chalk paint in ink and gave it a really good coat all around, making sure that I got around the edges of that clay piece as well. I did not paint the inside of this. You're not gonna see it, and I figured it would do better without it. And then once that paint is dry, I'm gonna use my white chalk paint and a chippy brush and do some heavy distressing on it, making sure that I bring out the detail on my clay piece. Now I'm going to take my foam and I put a little bit of hot glue down. I also stuck a piece of my bamboo skewer in there and then I put my cone on top of that. That skewer is going to help hold it in place. I am going to use some fix all adhesive to help it hold as well. Once that is set, I'm going to press it down into my bucket till it's tight. Then I'm going to take that greenery garland and I put a little bit of hot glue down at the bottom of the cone and then I just start wrapping up. As I go up, about every two wraps, I put a little more hot glue. This is just going to help hold it and keep it from slipping, but you don't have to do it on every wrap. You just have to make sure that you have it you know, far enough apart that it's going to hold and not slip. We're gonna do this all the way up our cone and then once I get to the top, I'm going to trim off my garland and I take that wire and stick it right into the top to make it hold. Now all we have to do is decorate this and this is truly to taste. I started off using big flowers and some of these big leaves from the Dollar Tree, but I decided that they just kind of overwhelmed it. And I really loved these little sunflowers that I had gotten from there. So the way I made those stick into my tree was I would just take a piece of my skewer and I would wrap the wire around it and put a little bit of glue and this held it in place. And then I just shoved it into my foam. Now you could probably just hot glue these on here too, but I wanted to be able to take it out and 
and change this for the season so I didn't really want to glue those flowers on I just kept going using berries and flowers taking off pieces that were really too big and adding smaller pieces until I really liked how it looked this is to your taste and you can use anything on it that you would like to once you get all of your florals on and it's decorated to taste this project is complete Do you like to create with paper? Create beautiful journals, cards, embellishments, and interactive mini albums? Well, you should go and check out our channel, Crafting Cousins Create. There, we slow down the videos and give you step-by-step -step instructions that make it easy for everyone from the beginning to the advanced crafter to follow along. There will be a link to that channel in the description box below. We hope that you'll come over and join us. Hey y'all, this is Kay. Let's gather a few materials, most of them from the Dollar Tree, and we'll make this cute little palette sign. I'm going to be using this cute little palette sign that I found recently at the Dollar Tree. It's about six and a quarter inches by six and a quarter inches, and it even has twine at the top so that you can hang it up. Also, one of these wooden pumpkins from the Dollar Tree. These are a great value because they have eight pumpkins inside and they're quite thick. I'm going to use this small word that says welcome. They came in a package of like six that I got at Hobby Lobby. I'm going to use some unfinished wood beads and of course we'll be painting them. This cute scrapbook paper, I got it at Hobby Lobby. This is just the remnant that was left. Some cute ribbon, I got this at Michael's but I saw something very similar just recently at the Dollar Tree. I'm also going to be using some green ribbons. I also pulled in a wider green ribbon from the Dollar Tree. I'm also going to be using some chalk paint. I'm using Waverly chalk paint in the colors Plaster and Pumpkin. Some antiquing wax by Folk Art. Some jute twine. And finally, some Mod Podge and my hot glue gun. So the first thing I'm going to do is just cut off that rope at the top. I won't be reusing it. And then I'm going to come in with my antiquing wax and I'm going to stain the front and the sides of my palette and get down into those nooks. Although let me warn you, they had a lot of glue there so it was really hard to get any coverage. But that's okay because we're going to do something different to this in just a moment as well. Oh, and I'm just using a baby wipe to spread this on y'all. And I'm also going to do the word welcome and I'm going to stain it kind of dark with this antiquing wax. Then I'm going to remove one of the pumpkins from our package. I'm going to turn it over on the side I want to use, trace it on the back of my scrapbook paper, and then I'm going to come in and cut that out. And there it is. I'm going to use Mod Podge and put a nice even coat on the front of my wood pumpkin, and then we'll put down our scrapbook paper, smooth it out as much as possible, and I even used my brayer to make sure it was nice and smooth. And once it had dried really well, I just came in with a coat of Mod Podge on the top to seal it. Because I'm going to be using several of these small beads, I decided the easiest thing to do was just place them in a plastic bag, use some watered down Waverly chalk paint in the color pumpkin, and then once they're coated well, I'm going to pour them out onto a piece of wax paper and just let them dry. I did blot them with a paper towel. For the pumpkin stem, I'm just going to use some twine and twist it around the top. I decided not to paint it. I thought this would look more authentic in the end. And we'll just cut that off and just secure it with some hot glue. Now I'm going to make a really small messy bow for the top of my pumpkin. You only need about three inch strips cut of the ribbons you're going to use. I chose three. Did start with mine a little longer because it was easier to hold on to. We'll just cross them on an X. I'm going to start out with the larger one, then place on the pumpkin color and then this green that I found. And then I'm going to take some jute twine, wrap it several times around the middle, and then I'll tie it off in the back with a knot. Really simple. Then I just start hacking at mine with my scissors and I test it several times to make sure it's the right size. Just making sure everything can be seen. Then take a little hot glue, place it right there at the base of the stem, and then we'll place on our ribbons, kind of like the leaves of our pumpkin. 
Then for this palette board, I told you we were going to do something else to it. I'm going in with my Waverly chalk paint in the color plaster. I'm using a really stiff brush and I'm just applying it on heavy in some areas, lighter in others. I just want to make sure that I still have part of the stain showing through, but I want to give it that chippy old look. I'm going to use wood glue and I'm going to apply it to the back of the word welcome using a popsicle stick so that I get just a nice even coverage and not too lumpy and then I will apply the word welcome right to the center of the bottom piece. For the pumpkin I did use a little wood glue and some hot glue and I'm just going to apply it down here on the boards. It didn't hold well with just the wood glue. The next thing I want to do is use this little string from a project from the Dollar Tree and I'm going to actually string on my beads. I just used some pliers to help me push them down. I started out with 22. I changed it to 20 but honestly I think about 16 would be fine as well. Next thing I'm going to do is just glue it to the back right where those strings were before. I'll place down one and then the second one and then I'm going to come in with some masking tape when I put some glue on the top just to make sure everything's nice and secure. Thank you so much for watching today. If you saw something you liked, we hope you'll give us a big thumbs up. Leave us a comment and let us know what you think and if you have any suggestions. We just love hearing from y'all and it really does help our channel grow. We are also over on TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, and Pinterest and would love it if you would click the link below and join us over there as well. If you enjoyed this episode, check out these videos for even more DIY inspiration. Bye y'all!